Before we start today's show, we want to invite you to stick around at the end of the episode to enjoy a preview of a new podcast that premieres on July 14th. As the industry's exclusive cannabis podcast network, MJ Bulls is proud to present Women Leading in Cannabis. Join host Kira Reed each week for inspirational discussions with women who are leading the cannabis industry. We are looking to raise money now to just further our growth. We are honestly adding headcount on a regular basis now. For 10 years, we've never done a big raise before. We're growing a little faster than we've ever grown before, and you know, you need cash to fuel that. So we are doing our first full raise. We're doing a Series A round right now. From MJ Bulls Media, it's the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. Today in Raising Cannabis Capital, we are joined by Noah Miller, the CEO of Black Dog LED. Noah, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan. Great to be here. You know, I'm interested in LED. I have a little bit of history with fluorescent lighting back in my last life. So LED is just fascinating. You guys have been providing LED lighting for, you know, nearly a decade. I laugh at this, but you're a grandfather in the industry. (laughs) You really are. I'd like to start off by picking your brain about LED. The thing that I find super interesting, but I completely don't understand, is how you can tune the spectrum of LED lights to create light that plants want. That just blows my mind. Uh, Without getting too technical, can you kind of talk a little bit about LED lighting and how that works? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're asking specifically about the spectrum here. So let's just assume everyone is somewhat familiar, like you, for lighting your house or reading a book at night or lighting the path on a bike ride with your lamp. You're going to be using often LEDs nowadays. So most people are familiar with at least the concept of LED. But now when we pivot that over into plants, not human eye response, that's an important differentiator to make. So if you and I are going to use an LED in our house, in our business, on our bike or something like that, we're going to be looking for something that's going to light it up for the human eye response. We care a lot about what we perceive to be white light. And what looks brightest to us, where we're most sensitive, is the green and yellow region, which we're going to interpret as white. So that's how those white LEDs that we use in our house and our offices are designed to put out a lot of photons in that region. That's what the human eye wants. Maybe the plant wants something different. Not only is it different, it's pretty much the opposite. Plants actually want the other stuff. They want the blue and the red. So if we give it a light that you and I perceive as white, it can still use that light, but it's not as efficient. We think it's more beneficial to create a targeted spectrum that goes to what the plant really wants. When you started 10 years ago, there was none of this. I'm assuming (laughs) that a lot of your research was born through necessity. We can't do enough research. The ability to grab specific colors and put them together That didn't exist 10, 15, 20 years ago, and certainly not at the power we have today. But yeah, we're doing things that we can't find anyone else doing, and it is novel research. And to us, it's really interesting and enjoyable to do, obviously. The benefits are for us and the customer. I love this story. I don't know where I heard this, but you were trying to penetrate deeper into the canopy so that they could take advantage of as much of the plant as possible. And you thought that maybe by adding ultraviolet light, you could penetrate a little bit deeper. And then a bunch of unexpected benefits came from that. Can you retell that story? There was research showing that the UV could have an impact on other things than just what we consider to be simple photosynthesis. So if all of us can go all the way back to high school and remember good old Roy G. Biv, right? Yep. So we, we start at the top, end up at the bottom. The, the thing that they don't tell you is you're kind of going backwards. So the blue and the ultraviolet, we all know that really hard UV can cause cancer and all that if you get to the UVB and UVC. So those are more energetic. As photons, which is our unit of light, as they move around or as they bounce off something, they're going to shed a little bit of heat and then move, shift down into a lower energy wavelength. So they're going to move towards the red, towards the R, and away from the V, right, away from the violet. So often the photons hit the plant and they bounce back and they bounce off. Every time it bounces, it's moving further down the wavelength to become less and less energetic. And once you get below red, you turn into IR or infrared. If they go to IR, now it's useless to the plants. But imagine if I start all the way at ultraviolet 
and it bounces around a few times, I've got a long way to go down that energetic curve before I get to use this light. So that photon can bounce around and check this. It can actually go right through the leaf. It's crazy, but the photon can go right through the leaf, shed a little energy, not get used, come out the other side and be a lower energy wavelength. But because we started at ultraviolet for that specific wavelength, that light can still be usable a couple layers down. The big benefit for us is we're creating a healthier plant. We found the plants to be sturdier and stronger. Literally, the stalks are stronger. That makes them, the cell walls get thicker because they're protecting themselves from the damage UV can cause. So now they're more disease and pest resistant because they're thicker and stronger. And then the real big benefit, if I stick you under ultraviolet, you're going to get a tan. The plant gets a tan, but in their case, they're going to push out sap as the protective mechanism like you tan. And guess what? In cannabis, what that sap is full of, all the good stuff we want. So what we end up with is a literally at the laboratory, a testable higher level of active compounds. Oh, it's fascinating. We do five shows about this. This is such good stuff. We got to move on. But if you want more information, go to their website. There's tons of information about this on the website and even more YouTube channel. Speaking of your website, I was shocked. I didn't realize, I mean, there, there are hundreds and hundreds of products on your website and they're not all LED lighting. I mean, well, we have, first off would be the glasses that we designed with Method 7 for our spectrum. So those are unique to us. I don't know if you've heard of Method 7, Dan, but they make a lot of the best glasses for working under bright lights in horticulture, HPS, metal halide, all those. And they kind of are the premier company for optics for working in a grow room. They worked with us to reverse it out. So if you put our special glasses on, not only does it offer protection that you should have when working under artificial lights in a grow environment, but it also actually reverses our spectrum and makes it look like for you, it turns our plant lights into human lights. It makes it perfectly white light to work under. So that's kind of cool. Beyond that, one thing we learned, and, and you'll get a kick out of this because you know how far the industry has come, is we used to get on the phone a lot with people and they, we'd talk to them about our lights and they'd buy a light and they'd say, great, what else do I need? And we'd say, well, get comfortable because the light is really just one piece of a giant puzzle and you need about you know 40 other things to really set up a good home grow that's going to produce well. And so we kind of learned that we didn't want to keep having that conversation and it's tough for people to go find the parts that all work and fit together properly. So we have put together over a couple of years what we consider to be, we joke around and call it the no home depot kit. If you get this grow kit, it has every single thing you need to grow if you had zero gear when you bought it. The only thing we don't include is a seed or a plant and soil. That's okay. it. Everything else is included. So we sell everything you need individually, but the main purpose we have all those other things is for those people that really want to get started but are too afraid to try and figure all these parts out. They can just one-stop shop, buy it all, have basically an entire grow kit delivered to them, ready to go out of the box. Perfect. Yeah, so you want to get in the home growing business, it's there. So what's next for Black Dog LED? For us, it's continuing to improve. You know, we've been doing this 10 years, as you pointed out, and you're the first person that I've ever heard say the grandfather thing, because we, we do consider ourselves grandfathers. We know who was here when we started. Most of them, almost all of them are long gone. We love this industry, one, because of cannabis. We are very passionate. Everybody that uh, sells our lights, we all grow with their lights. We're all active growers. We're here because we're passionate about it. And we want to continue to provide better products for ourselves and our customers. We love growing with our lights. And, you know, we have a lot on our roadmap right now. But our focus is really still remaining on our lights because the technology is advancing. And it's not just us. It's the LED technology, as we know, is growing around the world. And, and things are getting better every month. And so we get to absorb that tech and provide even better grow lights on a regular basis to our customers. So to us, it's really continuing to make those incremental improvements and make our lights better and more efficacious and continue to work with our customers to learn about what they need, what's working, what's not. Well, and it's worked so far. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's expensive, though. The research that you're doing and gearing up for the uh, every state that comes on and there's a whole new wave of home growers are you raising any money to help prepare for this growth? Even after 10 years, we've never done a big raise before. We're growing a little faster than we've ever grown before. And, you know, you need cash to fuel that. So we are doing our first full raise. We're doing a Series A round right now. What we're doing is we're looking for a $3 million raise right now. Any credit investor, we'd welcome them to contact us. They can reach us at investment at blackdogled.com. We are looking to raise money now to just further our growth. We are honestly adding headcount on a regular basis now, 
and just trying to keep up with the demand at this point. You know, it's it's almost like a land grab, but you have to because every state that comes on is just <laughs> so much opportunity. And if you don't get it, somebody else will. We've been speaking with Noah Miller from Black Dog LED, and I'll have all of his contact information and investor information also on the web, MJ Bulls website. So, Noah, it's been a, great to have you on the show. Please promise me that you'll be back on again. We, we'd love to be back on the show now. My name is Kira Reed, and I'd like to invite you to be inspired by the women who are leading in the cannabis industry. Each week, we will discuss empowerment, leadership, and what it means to be a woman in charge in marijuana, hemp, and CBD. As the founder of the Women Empowered in Cannabis community, I have had the great pleasure to get to know many brilliant and talented women who are CEOs, executives, politicians, advocates, and community leaders that are focused on creating a cannabis economy that is just, fair, and equal. We'll learn how these women make decisions, how they navigate a predominantly male industry, and what they're doing to level the playing field for women. I hope you'll join us.